What's up everybody, Renfail here, and welcome to my ultimate hunter guide for Lord of the Rings Online. I've done a few of the class guides over the years talking about the various characters that I play, some of the things I like and dislike about the various classes. They've made some changes in 2022 and 2023 to the various builds and abilities and everything else, so I kind of wanted to jump in a little bit and talk about where the hunter's at as of 2023. This video is being recorded on... March 31st of 2023. So if you're looking for a timeline, that's the timeline you should be paying attention to. Uh, they may make changes to this, you know, three months down the road, and I need to do an updated version of it. But for the meantime, we're going to be diving into how the Hunter plays as of right now and sort of my opinion on what makes this uh, one of the best classes out there and the way I play it and the way you might want to play it as well. If this is the first time tuning into one of my videos here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update because I do a lot of game guides for not just the Lord of the Rings Online, but also Star Wars Old Republic and a lot of other CRPGs like Celasta, Pillars of Eternity, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Neverwinter, and all sorts of other stuff. I also play tabletop games. We do Starfinder, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. We do movies and books and film reviews. Uh, just check out the playlist. There's lots of cool stuff. And if you can, please support by dropping a super thanks on this video or by joining as a member. Now that we've got the introduction out of the way, let's dive into the class guide for the Hunter here in Lord of the Rings Online. Now the Hunter is primarily a ranged class in Lord of the Rings Online. That's not to say you don't have melee abilities. Um, if we come down here and look, we have a handful of melee abilities like Blindside, Scourging Blow, uh, Low Cut, uh, and improved dazing blow. Um, but for the most part, this is a ranged class that's all about the DPS. And the type of ranged DPS you play is going to depend largely on how you are playing the game. Are you playing this game by yourself? Are you playing this game with a group of friends, a regular static group, like a fellowship? Or are you playing this game as a part of a guild and you're doing not necessarily just the fellowship content but also the raid content because the type of content you're playing is going to change how you spec your character now what do i mean by that well if you open up the virtue tab with the j button you've got your trait trees here and there are a variety of ways that you can spec your character um, depending on whether or not you're playing by yourself, playing with a group, or playing in a raid. Now, if you've ever watched one of my other overview videos on the virtue and trait system, I'm not going to do a deep dive into this today other than just to talk briefly about the three spec types for the hunter and how these might apply to you. Now, you'll notice that I have gone all the way through the Huntsman line. This character, uh, as it stands right now, I'm what, level 83. So I'm in Rohan right now. I've been playing this character for quite a while. Um, and I am fully specced down what is known as the Blue Line, which is the Huntsman line. Now, one of the reasons I prefer to use the Blue Line for my regular leveling is because, for me, the Blue Line is all about mobility. Um, this particular... Um, uh, the blue line allows you to fire arrows on the move, which means as opposed to being stationary and needing to just sit in one place to fire arrows, I can actually move around. Now let's let's see if I can go out here and find a, an enemy to look at really quick. Uh, pop that run speed on. See if there's anything. Oh, here's one over here. So here's what I'm talking about. There's an invader right over here, and I'm running around, and I want to fire an arrow. Boom! I fired an arrow. You'll notice that it... Oh, there he goes. So I can actually fire while I'm on the fly. Now, you can't do that with any of the other builds, and that's one of the reasons why I love the... Well, we'll take that. Why not? Accept that quest. Ooh, I might as well harvest this while I'm out here about. That's one of the reasons I love the blue line more than any of the other ones, because I can fire on the fly so I don't have to remain in one spot. However, you do sacrifice a little bit of DPS compared to the Bowmaster line. So the Bowmaster, and it even tells you in the description, so the Huntsman, a mobile harassing mid-ranged hunter. The Bowmaster, on the other hand, is a stationary long-ranged hunter that deals great damage. 
in my opinion, the Bowmaster is the best spec if you're going to be playing as a part of a regular fellowship who does the dungeons on a regular basis or the instances and skirmishes because you're going to be letting your group mates do the moving around. There's going to be a tank who's going to be pulling mobs to the group, positioning those uh, mobs somewhere. There's going to be some crowd control locking down the ads and your sole focus is going to be on pew pew. That's it. Pew 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 doing damage, killing mobs, and you're going to want the most amount of DPS possible. I also find that the Bowmaster is a great build if you're going to be playing in a raid scenario because your sole objective is to just be the pew pew. That's it. Just do damage. You're not supposed to move around the battlefield. You're supposed to plant yourself in a corner and just do lots of damage and focus on your rotations. Trapper of Foes... Um, this is about AoE and crowd control ranged skills to hinder foes. It's kind of like utility build. Now I've started to take points in here because there are some things like the enhanced damage over time. Um, there are things in here that I will continue to work on taking now that I have um, maxed out my Huntsman line. Um, because there's some utility that I would like to have out of this. But for the most part, this is all about your traps. Now, I don't actually use my traps very often. I have them, but I don't really use them. It's one of those things where um, if you want to use the traps in the game, they're a great sort of utility thing. Uh, and I think that for the most part, for my opinion, I found them useful when I'm playing in small fellowship encounters, like with my brother and maybe one other person. And we don't necessarily have a lore master to actually do crowd control. Um, this helps with those encounters that might over otherwise overwhelm us. But I don't know in my particular case that I've ever found the yellow line, the trapper or foe line to be anything that's worthwhile i know that sounds bad to say that it's a useless line but for me the way that i play the people that i play with i have never found the yellow line to be that useful i primarily stick to the blue line when i'm soloing and then if i'm going to be playing with some of our friends uh, in our gaming community then i will switch over to the red line for the dungeons and do more dps that way but the yellow line is one of those things where I've used traps in the past, but I've never found the need to actually dive into the yellow line and run through it in its entirety. Maybe that's just me. If there's somebody out there that actually runs yellow line for their hunter, I would love to hear from you. So please drop that in the comments below because I would love more information. I am not infallible. I do not know everything. And even though this is sort of my ultimate guide, uh, it's my ultimate guide, which means uh, it's my version of the way this class should be played. So take that into consideration when you're looking at the various ways that you can spec your character through the trait trees here in Lord of the Rings Online. Now probably the next most important component to the hunter is going to be the uh, pathfinding or find the path ability which include, it increases your movement speed and affects your nearby allies. And in this case I've taken some additional points because of my trait spec to give me some additional out of combat run speed. So currently this does 30% um, to myself and any members within 20 meters. Now it only affects us when we're out of combat and it, in, it's not really worthwhile if you're also going to be you know in an exterior space running around on a mount but it's great for inside of dungeons where you're not able to use mounts because you get that little bit of an extra run speed buff but also along with that enhanced mobility is the fact that hunters get these teleportation abilities so mickle delving thorin's hall brie oscarith esseline evan dim at West Angmar, and currently this is my um, bind point, which is the return to Faldhum. Um, I've also got a guide to the 21st Hall and a guide to Rivendell, which is a racial. Plus, you have the ability to bind yourself to one campfire anywhere you find in the world. Now, campfires can be located in different locations. There's one right here as an example. So if you find a campsite in the real world, um, <laughs> real world, sorry, in the game world, you would bind yourself to that camp spot and that gives you an additional teleport um, to go to at will. 
Um, but this is only for you, not for your group members. The uh, guide to Mickle Delving is for you and your fellowship. So this is one of the reasons why the Hunter is a preferred class for many people, because not only do you have the run speed buff, which gets you around more quickly, but you also have the ability to teleport around the world through the guide abilities. Now, you don't get all of them at once. Uh, you start off earning them as you level up through the game, so you'll get different uh, guides as you work your way level up um, and uncover new areas of the game but some of those are also locked behind um, factions so like the main ones you get just by leveling up but there's other ones that you get that are specialty teleports which you'll only get if you spend a you know a lot of time in a specific area and work your way up through the reputation and earn the faction to then purchase that off of the reputation vendor but those are like optionals that you don't necessarily have to have in order to get around the game um it's a bonus. So food for thought because the hunter is not only one of the most versatile in terms of mobility, but also because they can get around the game world, which is kind of really useful when it comes to doing epic book quests. It's not that big of a deal for normal exploration because you'll find that there are plenty of travel waypoints with the nor the good old-fashioned you know uh, mount system stable master uh, system that you can use which allows you to fast travel throughout the world to various locations but it doesn't hurt to have these teleports on hand um, because it helps your group get around especially when you're doing like say volume one the book quests there and you're towards the latter part of, of the volume there and they start sending you to all these different locations and you're running around the world constantly needing to get around it really does help speed up the, tra the transportation um, options um, to get around the world more quickly. Now, what are some of the cons of the Hunter class? Well, um, in my opinion, really there's only one con, and that's the fact that this class is a little squishy compared to others. Now, I'm fighting mobs that are significantly lower level than me, but you'll notice that these guys, when they hit me, I might need to go find something that's a little tougher. I mean, they're doing chunks of damage, and if I go over here and get another one, um, if, if I'm a, a guardian, for example, I can go out there and bring, you know, three, four, you know, five, maybe as many as eight mobs, get them on me at any given time, and sort of survive that without uh, too much of an issue. Did he run off? He leashed. Um, but in this case, the, the, the hunter is not as tough as the other classes. Now... You have some abilities that will help you out in this case, such as the Elder's Grace, which is a 75% parry chance and a 5% partial parry mitigation that you can pop, but it's a 30 minute cooldown, which doesn't make it exactly the best thing to use. But you also have abilities like Press Onward, which is a 45 second cooldown that allows you to heal yourself and get away because it has an additional run speed buff. And you also have... Um, um, the Earthborn, Strength of the Earth, which allows you to pop this and um, you'll take, uh, you know, you'll regain mana. So we're regenerating hit points here, as you notice when I click that ability, like so. So there are ways, you know, to survive, but it's not going to be as survivable as some of the other um, classes like the Hunter, or excuse me, like the Guardian. But this just, you know, you could look how quickly I kill that guy. Three different abilities and he's dead. Like, your DPS is so powerful that, you know, if you find yourself overwhelmed by mobs, you've probably just not paid attention and ran into the middle of a fight without paying attention <laughs> to what's going on. Because for the most part, you can control how many mobs you're going up against at any given time. And you kill things so quickly that it's really tough to find yourself overwhelmed like you really need to be in an area where the mob density is super thick like in a dungeon in a dungeon scenario you're not going to be wanting to run ahead anyway because you're going to be wanting to leave that to the tank but it is a consideration because the um the armor class of the um hunter is much lower and the hit points the morale are much lower than say your tank classes because remember you're not a tank you are a dps class your role is technically you're supposed to be back in the back doing damage not up front you know taking damage so that's a consideration great dps but the trade-off is that you don't have the survivability of some of the other classes one of the other things I think that a lot of people might want to consider when they're playing a hunter is that because of the transportation component of this class, the fact that you can get around very easily, it makes the hunter one of the best 
gathering classes out there if you're going to be focused on crafting at any point in time. So this particular um, uh, uh, character that I have, I chose to make an explorer because of that very reason, because I can do foresting, prospecting, and I'm getting hides from killing mobs. So I'm literally doing three birds with one stone because I'm gathering all all of the forestry equipment that I need to do woodworking and I have a woodworker on another character I'm doing all the prospecting I need to make weapons which I have on another character and then this character is a tailor so I can make my own armor with the hides that I get so you might not want to be a crafter with your hunter you might want to to take the explorer uh, vocation simply for the foresting and prospecting because you can run around and gather all the mining nodes and all of the wood nodes that you come across uh, and send those back to your crafters. Now I'm not tracking any nodes right now but we can run out here and take a look like literally right outside of here there is a, a, a Rittermark Scar deposit which we can just boom grab. I also love the fact that they don't dismount you in this game. Uh, like they do in other games and then are there any wood nodes close by it doesn't look like there are but i think the hunter makes one of the best uh you know literal hunter gatherer classes because uh, you can kill things quickly which means you can easily gather hides you can find large packs of wolves and because of the fact that you can track this is a consideration passes of nature we could just pop that and we could say oh well is there anything nothing no there's nothing nearby unfortunately um but uh, in this case, because of where we are, there are no animals nearby for us to track. But depending on where we're at, we could go around and track for animals, find a big deposit of animals, and then go from there and focus on gathering hides. And then while we're running around, we could be gathering wood and ore accordingly, which makes it one of the best hunter-gatherer classes out there, in my opinion. So that's something to consider. You might not be making this your main. You might be making a hunter as your backup. But it really is, in my mind, the best one to go out there, just run around and gather stuff, because you can very quickly get back to uh, town to sell and put things in the auction hall. So you can set up, you know, if you can find a campfire in the area that you're going to be harvesting, um, then you can set your bind point to that campfire, you know, recall back to Bree as an example with the guide button, guide to Bree, go drop your stuff off at the auction hall or drop it in the shared bank for your other characters and then boom, hit that return to camp and you're back where you were harvesting, get another round of goods, fill up your bags, go back. It's a great class for running around and just harvesting and getting components for your crafters or to sell so there you have it everyone that is the end of my ultimate hunter guide for lord of the rings online this is in my mind my favorite class to play it's the best class in the game as far as i'm concerned in terms of just quick and easy transportation getting around it's got great dps it's got good survivability it's easy to solo it's easy to gather things with it's easy to equip because as you get to level 50 and play through you know the the higher levels of content that the game has uh, available for you you get a uh, legendary bow which means you don't have to worry about doing any sort of crafting to get an epic weapon um, so it's a great way to just jump into the game and play uh, a Legolas style character if you would like to consider it that way um, with lots of pew pew damage and the ability to run around now you can be anything you want you could be you know a hunter you could be a, a halfling you could be a you know a human I chose an elf in this case but there are lots of options when you're creating your hunter you can pick whatever class you or whatever race you want to be um, but it's just an easy class to play there's not a lot of you know strategy required regardless of whether you're in a group or on a raid it's literally just point and shoot and that's one of the reasons why for example uh, my wife chris um, has never played a lot of mmrpgs and when she played lord of the rings online for the first time she gravitated to the hunter because it was so easy to play it was literally just stand there and point and shoot while i ran around with my guardian and gathered mobs for her to destroy so things to think about if you're going to be playing a hunter in lord of the rings online if you got to the end and you liked my guide don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. And please support if you can. You can drop a super thanks on this video. There are programmed amounts down below that YouTube just lets you push a button and donate accordingly. Or you can 
choose your own amount like 50 bucks 72 50 whatever you want to do plus we have memberships on the channel that start at three dollars a month and lots of private videos and fun stuff we do there is a patreon page as well we have a discord channel if you want to come hang out with us and of course if you ever see me live or on a premiere you can just drop a super chat or a sticker in one of those all are great ways to support so hopefully we'll see you in the next video and maybe even in game with us one day until then stay safe and happy gaming